Welcome to Astro Podcast. I am Jody Charami, and this is December 8th, the weekly astrology report. Welcome, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Astro Podcast is filmed on Studio Cloud Nine. Astro Podcast is produced by Power Boots, LLC. So today is Friday, December 8th. We are already a week into December. We have about another two weeks of Sagittarius season happening. And as we know, last week we talked about Venus moving into Scorpio, which it did on the 4th last week. Well, not last week, but this Tuesday. And then on the 6th, Neptune has station direct and is started to move but hasn't really it'll only move maybe a degree by the end of december or maybe roughly half of degree and that's not much going on there so the big news today is that the moon in libra is having a meeting with the south node in libra as you recall this year the moon's nodal accesses shift into Aries Libra and so with the south node in Libra which is ruled by Venus which just left and went into Scorpio the moon going and meeting up with the south node is really asking us to release emotional things that no longer serve us and as we know that's what the whole year has been about releasing 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 um, if it no longer serves you now if you still like it and it's beautiful still you don't want to sell it and buy a new one uh, then keep on going on that's not what we're talking about we're really talking about things that maybe are traumatic from childhood or a, an argument you might have had with someone and you can't ever see eye to eye it's time to release those feuds, those family feuds or the neighborhood feuds, whatever it is that may be stuck in your brain, in your emotional collectiveness there in your body. It's time to release that because it's not helping us any longer to hold on to anything like that as we head into the new year. And we always are letting go of things in the new year anyways, right? So this year we're just starting a little bit earlier and that's where we're at. So it's going to conjunct the south node, the moon in Libra conjuncts the south node at 22 degrees. Basically, um, its message is that there's no peace. There is no choice for peace along this uh, Aries axis nodal shifting here. There, Mars with the warrior mentality with Libra, the fair judge, the love. They don't want to um, rock the boat, so to speak. These are the people, they're super, they're super kind and they wanna help you always. Uh, this is the good part of Libra. And so with this whole connection going on with the moon meeting up with the South Node, we are being asked to release any type of baggage that is going to continue on causing war. But the way things are going, uh, it's not really working. People aren't ready to release this trauma, childhood trauma, whatever it is they may have. They don't want to release it yet. And then later on, tomorrow into Friday, the moon moves into Scorpio and as it enters scorpio it has a conjunction with venus who just went into scorpio on the fourth and that is bringing up obsessive behavior um because now we're dealing with emotional needs moon and scorpio and then venus in scorpio is also digging deeply into her values here and seeing what she what she values and what she doesn't value so things are happening 
um, deep down inside of us and it is being reflected outwardly with all the wars and conflicts happening and and the mass shootings that are occurring again in America and just as atrocities that are happening in the world right now we can see that being played out with this scorpion moon conjuncting Venus and Venus here is more of a warrior Venus because Mars and Pluto rule here and Mars is in Sagittarius right now and moved out but there's going to be a feeling of emotional lack. You're going to be obsessed into Saturday, running into Sunday, the moon's in Scorpio the whole weekend. And you really want to release these things. Let's say it's uh, something you no longer want to eat, uh, but you really crave it, like chocolate. Uh, maybe... These are the things you might have to work with. And it's one of those where I love it. Do I need it every day? This amount, should I lower it? It's just like anything else. And, you know, some studies have said you can have a glass of liquor uh, a day and it's good for you as you live longer. And you just never know what's going to help you out in the long run. So you really still have to pay attention to what it is that you value, what it is you want to continue on in your life, whatever that may be. Um, and this is a good time for that, especially as we're heading into um, the new year. You know, one of those uh, new year resolutions. Uh, the Venus in Scorpio is also going to oppose Jupiter. So... Again, we're getting the things where what it is we want and value are going to clash. Do you believe in what it is you want? It's really Jupiter's job to come in with the spiritual take and see if what it is that you want is at a higher level in terms of spiritually, it's also good for you. It's not just something you want to do because you want to do it you have to face reality as the weekend moves in the moon and scorpio will have many oppositions to jupiter to neptune to uh, uranus so what does all this mean the moon is our emotional needs that we only share when we're comfortable like at home with our loved ones that we trust it's, we put down our armor and show our emotional needs right so as the moon is in scorpio our emotional needs are going to be very deep and uh investigative and what we want has to really answer a lot of questions and so as that moon and Scorpio, who has us being very emotional and deep, uh, has a s opposition to Neptune, who just recently woke up, but it's barely moving, still has still, still what they call uh, snoozing. Neptune is still snoozing, right? Uh, and then the moon also opposes Uranus, who's still snoozing until January 20th in Taurus. Uh, and it's also going to have my opposition to Jupiter, who is also in Taurus, and it's still napping. It's close to waking up. So as the moon has these spats from Friday to Saturday to Sunday, as it's in Scorpio, very emotional, very explosive, very uh, could act irrationally. Uh, with these oppositions, we already see out in the world how it's affecting people up here we're like oh I'm... so there's a lot of things happening that are are really erratic uh odd um spontaneous combustion i would like to say um there's things happening that we're not exactly sure why but we have a feeling why it could be happening <laughs> So that's what's happening with the moon and Scorpio posing all these outer planets. Uh, we could be, have like a 
veil over our faces to where we can't see the truth of what's going on out there. Uh, we could be manipulated. Uh, same old theme throughout this year into next year as Neptune has many more meetups with personal planets. So as we come out of the weekend, uh, there's going to be a new moon in Sagittarius at 20 degrees on December 12th. And also Mercury will be stationing retrograde on the 12th uh, or the 13th, depending on where you live. And as soon as the new moon comes into the sign of Sagittarius, it squares Neptune immediately. And here the astrologists are saying, you will be rewarded if you're brave. So I'm not sure how you would think about being brave. Uh, no one's encouraging violence, that's for sure, okay? And then the new moon at 20 degrees Sagittarius is a point of being um, brave because Sagittarius is a fire sign that's very brave, but it's mutable. So you can have deception. You can have deception for you, for yourself. You could be deceiving yourself. You could deceive other people. You could see deception somewhere in the world. Outer planets are usually affecting the world that we see and we hear about. And then the personal planets really affect us more. So that's why the moon, having all these oppositions and squares to these outer planets, is really going to affect us in terms of personally, we're feeling this push and pull inside of ourselves to really toss out things that we no longer need. Let's say we're spring cleaning or fall cleaning and we have to throw out some winter clothes that we won't be wearing this year because, you know, it's just not going to wear it this season or maybe it's too small, maybe there's a stain on it, whatever it is, we don't want to wear it anymore. So that's the type of situation where you're like, uh, 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 do I want to want? And, you know, maybe you spent a good amount of money on it, but now it's just no longer, it's just ruined. It, you know, maybe a dog pissed on it or something. You know, it's just not any good. Or maybe your baby puked on it and you just could never get it out. And you have to throw it out now. So you're like, no, but you have to, right? So I know that's kind of a uh you know surface surface thing i'm talking about because it involves material goods clothes but these are things we value too you know we, we like our clothes or why would we buy them right and we usually have our clothes for a long time especially ones that we spent a good amount of money on so another thing could be you know you and your friend no longer talk and maybe it's time to either see if they still want to talk or not. Then you know that it's time to let go. And these are things that are happening right now too, especially in families. As we outgrow our parents or we outgrow our brothers and sisters or we outgrow our, our hometown or whatever is happening. There's a lot of movement going on emotionally. And when anything is affecting you emotionally you most likely will act out. And Mars is very active right now in Sagittarius where it's able to be free and, and wander around. And so that's giving us a lot of energy also. And the sun is also still in Sagittarius. And Sagittarius, again, if you're not familiar, is a mutable fire sign. It's the last fire sign of the zodiac year. And as such, muta mutability means we're getting ready. We, we're moving into a new sector, which is the new year. So this is the time to be brave and um, act on things that you 
want or need or desire because things are changing and shifting in our favor to where we can go do things that we want to own or achieve. Um, it's all within us to do it. And that's what Venus in Leo reprogramming this summer was about when it th went through its Kazemi is the self uh, acknowledgement wanting to be good wanting to do good things wanting to be better doesn't make you um vain doesn't make you a show off it just means that if you're doing it for yourself uh and you're getting acknowledged for it it's it's a great thing it's a it's a nice pat on the back but it doesn't have to affect another person negatively it could inspire that person you know what whatever feeling that they have it could turn into jealousy or it can turn into a spark that inspires you to want to try what you think you could do better so these are things that uh, people will be wrestling with and it's already affecting the government uh, there's a lot of stuff happening there that's just too much stuff and it's nonsense and it's not very mature and so there's so much going on that we could really take on all that energy and um, feel it ourselves which we don't want to do we don't want to take it on ourselves because it's not us it's something we are seeing but it's not affecting us personally um, a lot of the laws that are made will affect us personally. So we do want to be involved in voting for that and getting that done and all that good stuff, you know. Um, so from now until next week when I'm back on the 15th, Mercury will also be going retrograde in Capricorn. And we spoke a little bit about this last week. Mercury is the planet that rules our communication, our transportation, um, our, the people we talk to on a regular basis, uh, and how we communicate with these people. Now, with Mercury and Capricorn, I spoke about how it can be dry and uh, very to the point, very matter of fact, uh, like a detective asking you a question wants the facts and that's what a little bit of uh, mercury and capricorn is and again with mercury going to take a long retrograde nap here for three weeks it's going to start stationing retrograde or hibernation or out of the view of us on earth where we can't see it on the 12th next week in capricorn at eight degrees it will slow down now it has started slowing down and it will take a nap a long hibernation where we can't see mercury from earth and it will move all the way back into 22 degrees of sagittarius where it was around um uh thanksgiving day so then once it gets there it's gonna wake up and start moving forward back to eight degrees of capricorn mercury wakes up on january 1st 2024 at 22 degrees of sagittarius so it begins its nap at eight degrees of capricorn moves back to 22 degrees of sagittarius then it starts to go back and by january um 20th i believe it's back at eight degrees of capricorn and then it starts to move forward and goes into Aquarius on February 4th. So it's a very long time for Mercury here, the planet of communications and commerce and business in terms of communication and the internet and things like that. Uh, it's also going to have meetings with Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, who will be waking up on January 20th. Jupiter will be waking up December 30th, I believe. And then everyone's going to be awake. Um, and when Mercury meets up with Uranus, it's shockingly foretelling the future. So be prepared for that as we talk about that near the end of the year. 
Um, next week I will be back on the 15th and we will talk more about this retrograde happening with the new moon also occurring at the same time, the same day. And we'll still be feeling it next Friday. And remember again with the moon being in Scorpio, meeting up with a bunch of outer planets, we're going to feel the need to act on our emotions, but don't do that because the outer planets, most of them are still asleep like Uranus, Jupiter, who the moon will be meeting up as it transits this week into the 15th of December when I will be back. Um, also, we're already in the retrograde, pre-retrograde period for a while now, so just take it easy, slow down, use it as a time to meditate, which is what I will be doing and writing and editing. Hopefully, I'm not too procrastinating since Mercury takes a nap. Um, with Neptune waking up, I felt more energy. I've been waking up in the middle of the night more and having very vivid dreams of must be past lives where I think sometimes I'm in the prehistoric age with dinosaurs. And uh, so I definitely... And I haven't been watching any dinosaur shows, have I? Oh, yes, I have. I've been watching um, Monarch. I believe that's the name of Monarch on um, Apple+. Plus. So, yes, I have been being transferred back there in time in some ways. Um, so, that's what we're talking about with Mercury uh, taking a nap and running into Neptune or the moon and Scorpio running into Neptune as Neptune is now awake and super powerful with its magnetic way of um, making you believe in something that you really do want to believe in, but it may not be true. So you have to wait it out and see if people will be who you think they are, who you imagine them to be. And putting something on that on someone also isn't a good idea, right? Because it's it's difficult for people to live up to expectations that you know aren't human expectations or dreams, right? So always remember that, especially with your children and your family. Um, forgiveness is great, um, but it doesn't mean that you want it to happen again. Right, And so that's what this Venus meeting up with Neptune and the moon meeting up with Neptune is all about, is really checking out your deep need. Are you trying to make someone else happy? Are you making yourself happy? And for some people, this is their struggle in this lifetime, is just learning how to navigate personal relationships. Whereas other people may have other goals in this lifetime for their souls that are different so everybody's different some of us go through the same thing at the same time some of us go through different things at the same time as other people um that we may not even know and we may get only met online so that's where the world is it's very very friendly in certain ways but be careful with neptune and mercury taking a nap in terms of being conned, being grifted, okay? And use this new moon to really um, set a tone for having higher integrity in your relationships, having um, a set of values that you can be proud of, that you can manifest. And it's easy to manifest because it's, aligned with your true values and what you want in your heart so these are the messages coming down from the ether and thank you for being here this week i appreciate you uh please like and subscribe it would really help me um thank you i'll be here next week on december 15th bye